Good morning, world. Good morning. For those of you who watch This Is Us, it is one of my favorite shows. So I don't watch much network TV, mainly, you know, Netflix, things like that. Watch a lot of YouTube. There's these two guys on there, Cedric and Brian, really good. They're awesome. <laughs> Especially that Cedric guy. Woo! Mm, that's questionable. Let's move on. So Cedric had never watched This Is Us. So spoiler alert, those of you who haven't watched the new season of This Is Us, we are going to play some audio. It doesn't really give anything away. Just like most things, especially in Hollywood, there's some social commentary and they bring in COVID and the George Floyd situation. So I wanted Cedric to watch it and I wanted to get his response to some of the scenes. So because of copyright laws, YouTube won't let me actually put the scenes on there, but we have the audio. Right. So I'll put some stills, but you'll get the gist from the audio. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you don't want to know anything about it, wait, mark this and watch it after you've watched the episode. All right. Stay tuned for our feedback on This Is Us. I'm Cedric. And I'm Brian. And this is Cedric and Brian. I'm surprised you never watched the show. It's a good show. You liked it though, right? That yeah, episode? yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So it's... it's. Uh, I'm too busy filming YouTube videos and editing and things like that to have time to watch TV. <laughs> Did you say that with a straight face? <laughs> I tried. No. I broke. <laughs> so we watched it. Uh, our, my wife and I watched it. And we kind of got nervous because we saw some previews and we saw the subject matter that was going to be there and we were afraid that the show was going to just go woke because it is out of Hollywood. It does deal with mixed race. We got nervous. For the most part, they did a pretty good job of of not going ultra woke, let's right. just say. Right. But they did bring up some things that has it's bugged me a little bit about the show in the past, but not to the point where I I would never watch it. It's just I don't understand it, and that's why I wanted Cedric to watch it and get his feedback as a black man because obviously the woke part had to do with with the black character in the show and and his interactions with his white family members. Right. So, so this is us is basically a um, a TV series about. Oh God, I'll do this real quick. Uh, the family that has uh, they were, had triplets, and a third of the triplets passed away at birth. And by coincidence, there was another baby at the same hospital who was an African-American male, born around the same time, and they decided to adopt him. So now this African-American male is in a home, a, a white home, uh, with two siblings, and it revolves around that primarily. And I guess the episode you just had me watch was the season premiere of this new season? Yeah, yep. it's okay. the, it was a two-hour premiere. And again, they did a good job of bringing modern life right now it's very period piece yes. even though they bring back the 70s and try to combine it all but like i said we were nervous because what were they going to do with the the whole george floyd situation right and of course they did they did put some of the stereotypes on there that we've grown to see in the media right so so let's get into it all right so you want to do the first first scene yep let's do it okay so i'm going to set up the first scene this first scene that you're going to hear is when Randall, who is the black character, is talking to his wife after they've watched the George Floyd video. Okay. Eight minutes, Beth. Eight minutes. I nailed on that man for eight minutes. How do you... I can't even watch it. <laughs> it's too much. So obviously... It was a sentiment at that time when we first saw the George Floyd situation. Everybody kind of felt that way, right? Black, right. white, right, left. Right. We kind of, as a country, as a world, said this looked terrible. Yeah. We talked about it in one of our last videos where the Minnesota had basically had the world in their hands, like Brian said, black, white, young, old, until the riots started. We, they had everybody believing that okay, Derek Chauvin needs to pay the price for this. And then they got extremely woke and started rioting. And so, so my question here, and, and, and it makes sense, and I understand, and I understand how Hollywood works. They didn't focus too much on anybody else being upset about it. They just focused on the black characters in the show being upset about it. 
which right off the bat isn't really fair because you saw the mass amount of protests at the beginning with white people, Asian people, Hispanic people. So again, I know they were doing that and I know why they do it, but we just wanted to point that out. That just kind of just sets this up. You ready to play the second clip? Yes. Okay. So this one I'm going to set up. So this is when Randall is talking to his daughter's boyfriend and brings up the George Floyd situation. I see uh, you and your family been out there demonstrating. Days just showed me some pictures. Did you watch when it came out? The video? George? Yeah. Yeah, I watched it with my dad, actually. And we took a walk right after. It's kind of our thing now. That's what we do. Start after Trayvon Martin and it's been taking walks since. So we won't play it too long. That he goes into a, something that happened back in 1995 with another, I guess it was, I don't know if this one was caught on film, but it was another uh, black person that was killed by the police, held down. So we're not going to go too much into this because the question that I had for Cedric, because in this scene, if you watch it, um, Randall starts to cry, and, and, and you can just see the emotion in it. And I asked Cedric this, and I brought this up. The number one victim of hate crimes right now is not the black community. It's the Jewish community. Jewish community. I happen to have my, my whole mom's side of the family is Jewish. What I asked him is, when I hear of somebody who's Jewish, a single incident that has died, I don't internalize it. I don't get sad. I didn't know that person. There's enough people and there's enough tragedy in one's own life to have to take on the world. When a white person, and Brandon Tatum brought this up, when a white person sees something unjustly happen to white people, and like we mentioned before, remember the numbers, mm -hmm. more unarmed white people are killed by police than black. Of course, you don't see that on the news. Right. So I asked Cedric, why in the black community they internalize and they take it personally. Somebody that they've never met, those people have never met George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Why is it a community thing? Well, I think we've been trained to do that. Um, you know, I think it's a, uh, when you look at back in history, you look at the, at Anne Frank and you look at the great author, uh, Victor Frankel, he talks a lot about concentration camps. And you did a great job of saying like, yeah, it's the Jews who were, who were the most hate upon group, more so than the blacks. And I started making the correlation. I started thinking that although there are no longer physical concentration camps out there, the left, the Democrats, the media, they have enslaved black communities into what I call mental concentration camps. If they can get us to feel for every black person that's died and that it was done unjustly and it was wrong and, and that their life was taken from them and get us to feel that emotion, just like you, that clip you just played. We, we talked about that a few weeks ago. Like uh, a movie clip isn't just the words that are spoken. It's the, the ominous music that's played yeah. behind it and, and the crying. And now you can feel this emotionally. We get upset. Uh, I think we said in our last video, there's 40 million black Americans. If I cried every time a black American died, I, it'd be nonstop crying. Yeah. Nonstop. And, and they, they died for different reasons. But like Brian just said, whites are killed at a higher rate by the police than blacks are. And we've looked at a lot of these examples, your George Floyds, your Walter uh, Wallace Juniors, your um, Jacob Blakes. They came across the police. They were resisting arrest. They wouldn't comply. The cops didn't probably, in a lot of cases, didn't want to do what they had to do, but they were left no other option. And then once that happens, the firestorm hits. But even, let's say, let's say it was a completely unjustified. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say... For sake of a matter, we watched on video an actual racist cop. Because, again, with these other situations, we don't even know if it's racist. It, that's right. just what it's played right. out bad. Let's say somebody called somebody the N-word and shot him right on camera. We would all be outraged, like we would if we saw any injustice done across the spectrum. White, black, Asian, whatever. Mm -hmm. It just seems that in the black community... It becomes personal, even though it's not personal, even though you don't know that person. Right. It's done intentionally. And because, like, like I said, with the concentration camps, the first thing you want to do with a concentration camp is dehumanize the people. And it's that old saying, misery loves company. If you can get a group of people, the black community, to feel like they're being dehumanized and they're all being killed and they're all being hunted, as people like LeBron James have said, you dehumanize them, 
you can get them to buy into the whole misery loves company um, aspect. And uh, you get to a point where you start believing black lives don't matter. That, that's where that, that came from. That just like, could now they stand up and say, you know what? They're right. Cops are hunting us. We're, we're being hunted. The, our lives aren't valued. We're dehumanized. Our lives don't matter. And so now you've created this, this, this system, this, this wave of people who are bonded together under a false narrative. They do such a good job on that show of bringing emotion because emotion is what drives people. It's what's going to get people to watch it. Nobody's going to sit there and watch a show full of statistics. Right. So it's a fantastic show because it triggers. I mean, there's probably at least half the episodes I cry. Sorry, did I just put my man card down? No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> because they just are really good at pulling at the heart heartstrings and bringing emotion, which is fine. But then when you sit back and look at some of the emotions that they're trying to get from you, you wonder, okay, well, why? Why are they doing this? And how has this worked so well for so long to the point that now you have riots in the street? Because as Tatum says, you all need to stop this. You're making us look bad. Well, he's taking that us just the same thing. He's putting everybody in a group, whether he right. wants to or not, because I know he doesn't like to do that, but he just did that. But that... And, and I said this to Cedric, I said, by, by saying you need to feel bad because another black person, you have no idea who that person is. Then we find out they're a criminal anyways, but you're sad for him. And at the end of the show, Randall says how sad he is. It's like, you're sad for somebody you never even knew just because of the color of their skin. Well, you're making Joe Biden right. Joe Biden says that basically black people all think the same. Right. That's the racism. Well, that, that, that's racism because in his... But think about you think of the word racism and think about what racism is people when you tell someone and this is what the left has done and you guys play along with me here and i know they can answer this when you when rosa parks was told that she couldn't sit at the front of the bus because of her color that was racism when black people were told well you can't dine at this restaurant or you can't drink from this water fountain because of your color that is racism when chelsea handler tells 50 cent that you can't vote for a certain candidate because of your color that is racism yeah and it is done very slightly very 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 minutely but it's racism when you tell someone they can't do something because of their race it's racism or if you're a show like this and you're telling every black person that they need to feel sadness for somebody that they don't even know again that's a form of racism right and that's the the backlash i get a lot when i start thinking independently because and, and candace owens i don't know if she coined this phrase but she says it very well about leaving the democratic plantation or leaving that group think anytime you step out of that narrative and you start thinking for yourself and you go against the the black societal norms then you're labeled a coon a sellout and you're not feeling the same pain faint the same pain that we all need to feel as a group right and then i'm going to play this next clip because then cedric brought up something um when he watched this that didn't cross my mind Randall, are we good I mean, I've been texting and reaching out, and I haven't heard anything back, really. And I'm just so worried about about you and Beth and the girls, you know, with everything that's going on in the news. I'm so overwhelmed by it, I can't even imagine what you guys are all going through. So, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sorry about what? Specifically, what are you apologizing for? I'm just I'm sorry about what's going on in the country and the protests. And okay, but you've never apologized before. And this isn't the first black person to be killed on camera. No, it's, it's not. I don't know, this feels different. It's not for me, Kate. It, it's never been different for me. We grew up in the same house. Things like this have been happening to black people for years and we've never talked about it. A couple things, one, and we mentioned this before, it kind of seemed like this family who was together, black and white together, it's all of a sudden feeling like they have to live two separate lives now because of this separatism. And he's playing on, and this is where you brought it out, he's playing on her white guilt. Why her, her white guilt. Yeah. And she's in a, she's definitely, and the, the character Kate uh, does a great job, she's in a no-win situation because as she comes out and she's ready to, to plead to her brother, I'm sorry. And here's the thing, she doesn't even know what to be sorry about. And in, instead of being 
someone who loves her, he kind of, he capitalizes on that using his black power. And we talked about in our last video with the interview of uh, Dr. Uh, Steele, is that we use that black power as a way of focusing leverage up of guilt, of white guilt on people. Saying, yeah, you're never gonna know what I feel, so now I got you. Because you're never gonna know how I feel. And the thing about Randall's character, I had to ask Brian because I didn't know about the character development. I guess you said he was a, some type of genius or Yeah, he's a very else. smart guy, very successful, and now a politician. And now he's a politician, so a very well accomplished, and I'm not, I'm, I'll am i use the term black man, but let's be real here, well accomplished man. He doesn't really know what a George Floyd is going through or what a Walter Wallace Jr. I don't think he's ever, based on his character, and he grew up in the home that he did, he never punched his mother in the face a la Walter Wallace Jr. He never held a, a lady, a, a gun at a lady's stomach, a la uh, George, George Floyd. Floyd. He, didn't, he didn't do it. So he doesn't know that experience either. The pigmentation of his skin doesn't mean that he has the same shared experiences because I don't have the same shared experiences of, as a Michael Jordan. I don't have the same shared experiences of a Sasha and Malia Obama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they grew up in a very privileged household. I don't have that experience. So should I have the same experience as them because we have the same pigment skin? Absolutely not. Depending on what household, and I think it's a great analogy, uh, Randall and Kate grew up in the same household with the same parents. That's what should galvanize them together. Not the fact that he's black and she's white. Right, but that's what the media and society at whole now is telling black people, and, and I hear it all the time, it's, you, it's my experience, it's my truth, that whole thing. And he says, no, there's a truth, right. it's not my truth. Right. So just because he's that tone now all of a sudden you're supposed to be, that's supposed to be your lived right. experience and it's silly. And that's why this whole episode got me and that, why I brought the whole thing up because I thought, why is he, and at the very end of the show, Randall talks about, I'm just so sad. I'm just so sad. Well, why are you sad? If I, if I was sad for, if I went through the obituaries and found out everybody who didn't die of old age, they died for some other reason, we'd just be perpetually sad. Right. So, right. He brings up, and this is what I get all the time because Michelle Obama did this too. She says there's a never-ending list of black people killed by the police. And then she names the four that she could remember. Because there's not a never-ending list. It's a list and we address it almost every time because, like Randall said, you see it on TV. You see it on video. They never show the white guy being killed, the Hispanic guy being killed, the Asian guy being killed. They don't show that. It doesn't right. fit the narrative. Fit the narrative. But it does happen if you actually look at FBI statistics. So why is that? And it, again, it's because they're trying to have a monolithic voice from one community and one community only, and that's the black community. Yeah, and they've done a good job. Like I said, that I don't know if that's a term that we just made up. The that mental concentration camp. Yeah, that was, we all, gave that up. That's we're good. all in that together, and it's like, oh my goodness, we're all going through this together, and no one outside of this camp can possibly know what we're going through. So we have to galvanize together and stick together. And whenever they do one of us wrong, they've done all of us wrong. Yeah. Shelby Steele said they take an individual case mm -hmm. and make it a movement. Yeah. But what about the opposite? What about a Ben Carson? Why isn't that a movement? Instead, right. he's a sellout and a coon. Right. He's the most, one of the most successful neurosurgeons ever to live. And now he's in government, yet we don't hold him up. He's, nope. he's an outlier. Right. So, so the people who are killed are not outliers, but the successful black people are outliers. Right. Yeah, the whole statistics of mean, median, and mode, the ones who are, like you said, dirt poor and victimized by the police, that's the norm. But the one who finds success in crimes out of the primordial goo and finds success, yeah. well, that, that's an outlier. That doesn't happen all the time. I know. Which is true for the, the opposite. That doesn't happen all the time, but we make it the norm. Last scene, and this one just kind of brought everything home and kind of puts a bow on everything here. So this scene is set up with him talking to his therapist. Randall. Hi, Dr. Lee. Um, sorry to bother you. I hope it's an okay time to... No, of course. I, I, I saw your name and I wanted to make sure everything was all right. Yeah, no, everything's all right. But... When we first met, Dr. Lee, you made a point of pointing out just how few black men seek you out for therapy. It's a very small number were your words. I remember. I made a conscious choice to start seeing a white female therapist. 
I know that. It's complicated for me, and I can't claim to understand it, but I, I do know it. If that makes sense. There are things, Dr. Lee, that I don't feel comfortable talking to you about. There's stuff I, I put away when I enter your office, and that doesn't help me get better. And there's nothing you can do to make me more comfortable. I just... I need something different. I'm gonna make a change and find a black therapist. Cedric and I have known each other for 20 years. Cedric knows more about kind of my dark, he's kind of my therapist and I've been his therapist. He's black and I'm white. I didn't search out another white guy to, to befriend so I could tell them my problems. I, I don't think you searched out another black friend to talk about stuff. So this, and I'm sorry, it's a Hollywood left-wing thing. It was the only real Hollywood left-wing thing that I saw there. And people, people, good-hearted people will nod and say, I understand what he's coming from. He needs to find somebody like him. He was, she was his successful therapist, and he even says earlier in the episode how good he's doing. Yet, because of this George Floyd, now he can't tell her everything because <laughs> she's not a black right. man. Right. And like Brian was saying, it's, um, I mean, I don't know how successful the therapist, I don't know the, the show as much as Brian does. He's watched before. So I don't know what type of schooling this therapist had. I don't know how adept she was at. And maybe she was incredible. And maybe she wasn't. But that should be the only thing that she's measured against. Because Brian and I were talking about, like, you're, imagine right now your house is engulfed in flames and fireman comes to put out the fire and tell you to evacuate. Are you going to stop and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not, you're not the right color. Yeah, you're not the right color to put this fire out. Yeah. Can you put the fire out? How long have you been a firefighter and can you put this fire out? And we also use the analogy with uh, having cancer. When you search out someone to cure you of cancer, I hope you don't choose them based on their color. How much, what's your success ratio? If you've cured cancer in 99.9% .9 of all cases, you're the man but what or he, woman. But what he's implicitly saying is that you're not going to understand me. Well, like Cedric said, if he went and talked to um, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's not going to understand where Cedric's coming from. Michael Jordan lives a completely different world. They just happen to be the same color. Right. So what is the color of the skin? Again, they make this monolithic summary of people based on their skin color. Like Randall can only find somebody to speak to and open up if they're black. And then the show ended, and again, spoiler alert, they ended showing the white family and the black family separated now. And that's kind of how it ended. It, kind of, it was kind of a subtle, subliminal message of Randall's much happier being with his black family. Right. They're, they're fine without their black brother. It's, just, it, it, it's a sad statement on life when we separate people by color. Right. And hopefully you can put this, this just pop into my head because that happens a lot. That's why Brian edits out a lot of my stuff <laughs> because random things pop into my head. But it reminds me of that Disney classic, The Fox and the Hound, with the copper, the, uh, the fox, and Todd. Now I got to mix it up. Copper was the hound, Todd was the fox. And at the end, because they're animals and one is designed to hunt the other and one's a predator, mm -hmm. one's a, like that, they just, after growing up together, they decide, you know what, this isn't going to work. Let's separate. But if Brian can play the end of that movie, I don't know if he's allowed to. They decide, you know, we're going to be friends. And it's animated. It's a cartoon. It's, one's a hound. One's a fox. But at the end, it's like, you know, we're different. But that shouldn't stop us from being buddies and pals. <laughs> I'm going to cry. But, like, I want to say what Brian pointed out before. Like, we've, we've been friends for, you know, or two decades now. And we've come to each other. We've talked about work issues. And we've talked to you about husband issues. And we've talked to you about father issues. And we never, I never came at to him from a black man's perspective. He never came at that thing to me from a white man's perspective. We were two men who were in the same areas of my life talking about shared experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the pigment of our skin, it didn't factor into that. Mm -hmm. But now the media is trying to say, nope, nope, there is a difference now. Because he's a black man, because I'm a black man, Brian can't really understand what I'm going through. But I think Brian knows me as someone who's a law-abiding citizen. Someone who works hard, someone who's a injured, someone who, who loves his his family. Those are the shared experiences we have. And, and that other stuff's made up. And and Hollywood does this all the time. There's another show that I used to enjoy, and it's off the air. But again, and we talked about this before, where they talk that the black character and how he has to have the talk 
because a white person doesn't tell their kids to respect the police. Only a black person has to because, of course, the police are hunting black people. And this is the narrative we're fed all the time. So, and I know we're, and I know we're, the character of Randall, why they wrote that in, because black people are supposed to have such a different experience than the rest of society that's not black that they have to do that. But the reality is it doesn't have to be that way. Martin Luther King didn't want it to be that way. He actually wanted a colorblind society, which that's verboten now. You can't say that. You're a racist. So uh, we thank you guys for watching. Um, please continue giving us feedback. A lot of you are doing an incredible job at that, giving us feedback in the comments. And uh, some of you are like even taking that extra step and in, in sharing our videos with your family and friends. And we'll really appreciate that as our numbers continue to grow. But make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell and share this video with everyone you know. And I just want to add one more thing, whatever you're going through, don't allow yourself to be sucked into a mental concentration cap where you think that you have to stay there and that you're the only one who's going through what you're going through because we're all here put together to help each other out. Until next time, I'm Cedric. And I'm Brian. See you later.